This is the first time that I will ever have written down these events from when I was a child. I should have recorded them sooner, but I'll do my best to recount them for you. In the 1980s, my parents had finally come into some money and we were able to move in in a nice, quiet suburban area in Sacramento. I was about eight or nine at the time, and my parents had just had their second child, my sister. The neighborhood was nice and the house was beautiful, but the best part about the move was the in-ground pool in the backyard. As you can imagine as a kid, I was very excited to have my own pool to swim in. A few months went by and everything seemed normal. One day, I had come home from school and my parents weren't home from work yet. I made myself a snack and I started watching TV in the living room. All of a sudden, I hear a loud splash come from the pool. I put my sandwich down and I opened the screen door. When I looked at the pool, I expected to see some ripples in it from whatever hit the water, but it was completely still. I went back inside and convinced myself that the splash must have came from somewhere else. The next day, I had come home from school again and was watching TV when I started to hear footsteps coming from outside. The footsteps sounded wet, like someone was walking around with a bunch of water in their shoes. Paranoid and frightened, I slowly walked to my room and closed the door. I curled up near my bed and could still hear the footsteps, this time from inside the house, creeping closer to my room. I could hear the splashes on the carpet, the water dripping onto the floor. After a while, the noise stopped. I opened my door and looked on the floor, sure I would find some sort of wet footprints but the carpet was completely dry. I went back to the pool only to find it eerily motionless once more. I didn't tell anybody about the footsteps, although looking back I probably should have. The following week my parents invited my aunt, my uncle, and their children over for a barbecue. My dad had set up a table to eat outside near the pool. The family was all sitting down, getting ready to eat. I don't know how it happened. What I can tell you is that something was drawing me near the pool. There were no voices, just a force pushing me to the edge of the water. My parents said that I slipped, but honestly I don't remember falling. All I remember is that I suddenly was submerged in water and I couldn't breathe. I was unable to move, like there was an invisible force keeping me pinned down to the floor of the pool. My uncle was the first one to notice, and he was able to jump in and drag me out from the bottom. Since that day, I never used the pool again. We moved again about a year after. My parents kept telling me that it was just an accident, that I merely tripped, but I knew it was something more than that. Some sort of force guided me into that pool, and I never touched it again. I knew that if I went into that pool after that, whatever was trying to drown me, it would have. The most frightening time of my life began when I encountered the ghost of a ghastly girl who refused to be ignored. It made me a believer in other witnesses' paranormal accounts and ghost stories. I was house sitting for a friend who to this day refuses to believe me. On the first night, I was awoken by an eerie sobbing, which seemed to be coming from a disembodied voice. The sound was strange because it was like a stifled noise emanating from a young girl's throat. I went to the bathroom and I tried to shake it off until I saw her in the mirror. My blood froze as I stared into her ghostly face. For a moment, I thought I was hallucinating. I wondered briefly if I'd eaten something weird, but I hadn't even drinked before going to bed. Blood was dripping from both of her eyes all the way down her cheeks. Her lips were sewn shut. It was as if she had witnessed something so terrible that it caused her eyes to bleed. And somebody or something didn't want her to speak about it ever. 
The sobbing was still audible, but I was distracted by the bloody tears dripping down her pale cheeks and her mouth sewn together. I screamed and bolted out of the bathroom and back to my bed, pulling the covers over my head. Finally, I drifted off to sleep. Her disturbing attack continued through the night. Through the night, I was tossing and turning until I sat up and saw her again, floating in front of the dresser. I gasped and ducked my head back under the covers. I felt like she was hovering over me, but I couldn't be sure. After a while, I slowly peeked out and saw that she was gone. It took a little longer for me to drift back to sleep that time. I wondered who she could be and why she was there. My friend hadn't told me anything about a haunting or any kind of disturbance at her home. I slipped into a bottomless sleep and woke up early the next morning. I decided to use the other bathroom as I didn't want to see the girl again. Seeing as it was morning, I was a little braver. Nothing happened in the bathroom, so I slowly forgot about it. I never thought I'd be the subject of a creepy ghost story. Everywhere I went in that house gave me the chills, to the point of nearly deciding to sleep on the porch. One night, I was making a cup of tea, and I thought that I saw her reflection in the window. When I jerked myself around, I saw that nothing was there, although I felt an eerie presence around me. I only stayed for one more day, as my nerves got the better of me. I called my friend and I advised her that I would never return and I never did. I had never really believed in true creepy stories, but now I know better, seeing as it happened to me. I never want to see that terrifying girl again. It still disturbs me to this day. But I also hope she's okay. There was so much pain in her eyes that I almost feel bad for her. <laughs>